Well, today we'll just we'll we'll get started just because it's two o'clock in the interest of starting on time. Um, so I'm Kathy Bataro. I I'm your I'm leading you through the these next forty minutes or so. Uh, we're, today we're, go we're going to talk about delivering content, and we're talking about using video to deliver content. So what we know in the last week or so, last week we talked about delivering content in a variety of ways, and we're rounding it out with video. But I'm going to share my screen here. We'll get started. So last week, as I, as I kind of mentioned, we, we talked about other ways, a, a number of ways to deliver your content when you're, when you're teaching online. And, and this can be synchronous or asynchronous. Uh, the first one, and this was something that uh, Susan covered, it was digitized resources. So it might be, uh, you know, digitized print resources where it could be an article or your text, something like that. And the students would be required, required to read that. But the, the key there would be that associated read, reading guide. And um, is that my, is that my audio? Yeah, it's a little wonky. Okay, let me check it out. It's echoing. Talk, talk amongst yourselves. <laughs> Hi. We'll fix my hello, head. everybody. Yeah, hello. Okay, we're gonna try it again. How about, how does it seem now? Is it better? Yes. Okay, I just switched cameras. So then, um, and then after, after Susan uh, uh, walked us through using uh, reading guides, guided reading, uh, to help direct students to the most kind of salient uh, points in their, uh, those print resources, uh, we looked at narrated PowerPoints, which are another uh, powerful way to deliver content and really not really a fairly easy way. I think um, uh, a lot of people are familiar, familiar with that. Today, though, we'll, we'll look at video, we'll look at screen capture, and then we'll also look at recording uh, video with an external device, which might be a phone or a tablet or uh, just a, a video camera. And next week, uh, where we'll talk about podcasts, which are kind of an interesting way to deliver content. You know how popular podcasts are uh, these days. So it, it really is a video without video. So it's really audio. You're just delivering audio. And I think of uh, the value of that uh, to, to try to, you know, you know, throw that in the mix, of, you know, once or twice, if a person was interested, is that really what we know about podcasts is that, that you can watch them anywhere. So you can be driving. You can't really be driving and watching a video. You can be driving and you can do a podcast, that kind of thing. So that's something we'll look at next week. Susan and I um, were introduced to a, an app, um, I, I, I guess maybe January. It's pre-COVID, so I don't really remember uh, much before that. But uh, it, <laughs> we were actually, it's such a cool app. You just put it on your phone. It's called Anchor. And you're, of course, just uh, willing to, you're just, uh, welcome to look at it yourself, but uh, we were actually Susan. Do you want to talk about that? It was such a cool idea. It'll probably well. So we had we're just getting started, and it was just before COVID of doing. Uh, we we're going to call it teaching in five, like five minute podcasts on one teaching idea. You know, interviewing somebody, and we were using Anchor, and we had our appointment for our first victim. And then <laughs> <laughs> Everything went crazy. <laughs> we got a little too busy, but that's on the list for maybe in the fall. So yeah, next yeah. So yeah, we we got COVID on that thing, but but really the the point one of the points is that it's so easy to use. You know, really making easy. yeah, creating podcasts were not that easy before, but this this uh, app really uh, simplifies it. 
and it actually will upload your podcast to iTunes. That was always kind of an issue before. How do I get it to iTunes so people can see it? Here, you know, it, it has it, a library of music, so you can, you know, it just has all the little pieces of the genre so that you can make it sound like an ordinary one. Mm -hmm. So it's just another option, and we'll we'll explore that that next week. But back back to video. So today we're, we're, we're we will look at video, and this is kind of will be a, a roadmap. We're going to look at uh, some just a case study and on one uh, research uh, piece of research on using video in an online environment. Then we'll talk about best practices that arise from those uh, findings and those case studies and that research. We'll look at then the UIW resources. Again, this is just an overview. The UIW resources that we have to support you uh, with video, software, hardware, that kind of thing. And then there'll be time for questions. But there, there'll be time for questions. Feel free just any, any time along the way. So the first, the first um, we are going to look at a case. The first case study that we're going to look at really uh, is from Columbia University. And it was from 2014. And it was, the title was, What Makes Online Instructional Video Compelling? And so it was a group of um, research folks that looked at, the, over the course of a year, they looked at the online offerings at Columbia University. And they really looked at the video and how, how video was used in, within the courses. So they, they looked at it from two aspects. First, the analytics. The analytics of the video platform uh, which would show um, volume, you know, uh, usage, who was looking at video, who was looking at the video, um, how long did they watch the video, that kind of thing. So, um, and then, and then they also looked at um, um, how much time was spent on, on videos overall. So this is kind of what they, they found. The second thing they did though was they interviewed students just to dig a little bit deeper. So what they found really were that the videos that had the most views were videos that were directly linked to assessments and assignments. So really at, you're kind of guessing that students, there was some sort of, um, you know, they had some sort of stake in the game there. But what they found, what the researchers found was that uh, sometimes these videos were, were um, viewed three or four times um, more than the number of students in the class. So what that meant was that students watched them over and over. Um, and the second finding then, when they looked at the analytics, was the average viewing time. So over the course of the year and all the videos, the average viewing time was four minutes. Now that's not to say that the video should be four minutes because that's that's just not the case. And we'll talk a little bit about um, sort of engagement and within, within videos and that kind of thing so that you can keep students up to like seven or nine minutes. But no, not, but that was, I think, a, a real sort of an eye opener for them. Then when they went ahead and they interviewed the students, what the students would say, talking about what they appreciated and what really um, uh, created an engaging video for them and one that would keep them viewing. What, what, uh, one element was the integration of audio and visual, vi visual components. So that would be things like photographs, um, it might be an infographic, it might be a chart, something that really visualized the content beyond just spoken word and or written word, maybe on a slider or something like that. Another key element, uh, for, for student engagement was really this, this, this you'll see just on it. And this is of course true in the cl classroom as well, but it's the instructor presence. So, so it's what the students would say is that, you know, faculty were very engaging. Uh, um, they enjoyed their videos, faculty who uh, were humorous and witty, although I don't think you need to be a comedian, but that really, um, that really helped as well. Also relating personal or professional experience as it related to the content. Uh, the, um, students uh, mentioned that as well. It was really overall just the humanizing of the content. And when we think about it, we know that that actually already happens in class, in face-to-face -face class, 
but it's just a little bit uh, more difficult uh, in, in the online environment. And part of that is because when you're doing it, when you're lecturing or, or with students in a, in a face to face classroom, you know, you're, you're lecturing, but you're also answering questions, there might be discussions, you know, it can take a turn. Uh, but but that doesn't happen when it's just a video, because there's no you know, interaction really. So, so that I think is, is probably the difference and really anything that humanizes that your digital presence, um, that seems to be key. Then what was interesting too is the production value um, because this was Columbia and I mean, they spent money on these videos, it was crazy. So really had product, production studio and because they have money, they spent it. But what they found really was that that isn't what uh, appealed to students. Now, students appreciated video that wasn't shaky and audio that you could hear, like, like me when, I, when you know, I, I had the audio issues, that's no fun to listen to. But they didn't necessarily, and, and really videos that were well lit, and again, audio that was clear, um, but one of the students mentioned that his absolute favorite video was uh, a narrated PowerPoint that um, the faculty did on her home computer, just because of what the faculty member brought to that content. And also, um, you know, again, it was um, very engaging. So, and another, I, I'm gonna read a quote from another student who said, I don't think that it's the production value as much as it is the content and the instructor getting the point across. And what I think is good for us is that that's really taken a turn because it used to be about production value. It used to be, you know, I had to go somewhere to sit down with someone and they filmed me and then they helped edit it and then they uploaded it. A lot of that has really just been de democratized and in the last, I would say like five or six years so that, you know, I have a phone and if I have a tripod, I can create a video. I have a semi-decent laptop. I mean, it's pretty good. And it's got a web camera and I can create, I can create a video there. There's just so much more that we can do to get really decent video or decent audio um, just with the, the tools that we already have. So I actually think that is um, kind of a relief. But that's not to say that if you don't have the tools you need to create videos that you would like to, we will, help you get what you need to do what you need to do. Then there was a second uh, a bit of research uh, that was done and this was really about um, student engagement and, on, and student regulation of their own behaviors um, in the online environment and the findings, one of the findings of this um, research piece was that students who viewed uh, videos with interactive components invest or spend more time in the learning process, resulting in enhanced or superior learning outcomes. So again, that, that really isn't that surprising. It really is just mimicking, having the video mimic what is done in the classroom, where you have, you know, you built that relationship and it's, you know, you know them. Uh, but that is different in the online environment. And one of the things so to create that, to create those interactive pieces, some of the things that they, they talked about were maybe discussions, but definitely reflections. So reflecting on a video, and it can be it can be small, it can be it can be brief. It could be like the three, two, one, where you um, sort of your ticket out the door, where students might just say submit to you um, three things that they they learned in the video. Uh, maybe two questions that they still have, and then one point that they were surprised about or they really enjoyed, enjoyed that kind of thing. So just to get them to think about what they what they heard and what they saw. You can, all, again, you can do the, the discussion board. Within the video, you can create a small formative assessment, low stakes assessment, using Edpuzzle, which I'll talk about that later, because we have some exciting news about Edpuzzle. But then also, um, if, if you're using, even in your PowerPoint, or if you're using a video uh, in Microsoft Stream, you can, you can put in a Microsoft form, which is kind of like a Google form where you can ask a couple questions, that kind of thing. So, so I'm just really looking at interactive components um, in those videos. So then when we take that information, which isn't really that, uh, 
earth shaking. It's not, it's not like, well, that's, you know, crazy. It, it does kind of make sense because the online environment is different. And again, it doesn't have, I think what you're always thinking about is just humanizing the online environment. Um, and, and because I know, because I know from knowing, I don't know you all, but I know enough faculty to know the bonds and the um, relationships that you create with students and just how, uh, I, and I could also see that uh, in synchronous classes that I, I might maybe popped in, um, in, in March, but I see that relationship. When you're doing asynchronous, that, that's a little bit tougher to do. And, um, and video in the asynchronous world is, is something that you really need to think about. Uh, just how do I, how do I um, again, I always come back to that, how do I humanize um, my, my video content? So there's a person, um, her name is Shannon Riggs, and she is executive director of Oh gosh, um, academic programs and learning innovation at Oregon State University, and so she with the, she works with their online offerings. And actually, Oregon State University is really one of the top ten um, in the undergraduate online degree programs in, in U.S. News and World Report. So they're pretty pretty well known. She um, has a book, which I enjoy love. It's called Thrive Online. But what she, I, I really like these two, I like a lot of what she says, but I really thought that the next two slides I'm gonna show you, these are basically her words um, about shaping your content and shaping student behavior. So really, you have your content and you know your content, but really it's thinking about in the online environment, um, and especially if you're not synchronous, what should, how do you want students re to react to that content? And, and how will they know what's important? Because you're not there to tell them. So, so, so shaping your content, what she, she said is um, when in your videos, and this is kind of going back to the research, uh, is establish your presence and use, use humor and wit. But again, I mean, that's not a comedian thing. It's really just more of a personalizing um, uh, uh, effort, that kind of thing. When you're, when you're talking, when you're um, delivering your content, again, and this is probably, again, things you, you do um, in your face-to-face -face courses, but share what you find difficult in the content so that they, they actually are, it's probably things that they, they would struggle with as well, um, but it's kind of, kind of like a think aloud, really. And then share and discuss and disprove common misconceptions about the content that you're addressing. Make comparisons to things that students already know. That's just something that, that we do all, anyway. You're just always trying to connect new learning with, with um, prior knowledge. Tell stories, very, you know, that's very important. Um, and then chunk longer videos. This goes back to that four minute. And of course, you, nobody's saying your video should be four minutes, but really, if they're 45 minutes, you might think, oh, I'm going to chunk that just a little bit, or I'm going to put some interactive components in there just to kind of, you know, keep, keep the engagement um, level there. And also really, it's, those are just great check for understandings. And then I think the last piece is that you can curate, although I would say this, we don't have a lot of time to curate. I know you don't because it's upon us. So this, these are diff different times, but Later on, um, when you're, if you're teaching online, sometimes you don't have to create all the content. There's plenty of content out there, but it does take time and, and we can help you find that content, of course. There was actually something I read about um, just the other day. Uh, there's um, somebody who got uh, um, artist, musical artist, and I know Dolly Parton is one, to create songs about the 20, the, uh, about the amendments. So I think Dolly Parton maybe did the second amendment, but I, I, I guess it's really well done. And so it's just things like that, that different, um, uh, when there's time that, that you don't have to create all the content, that it can be curated as well. Uh, according to Shannon, then a second uh, important piece of um, video getting the most from your online video is really shaping student behaviors and this these are things you would do in a face-to-face -face course but online really to 
be direct with instructions, either a short video of you telling them um, at the be maybe it's at the beginning of your online content, direct instructions and expectations of, of what should happen when they're viewing the content. And maybe if some of it's required and some of it's optional, let them know that. If there's specific segments, um, if the videos are longer, also it call their attention. And again, it's kind of like the reading guides, really just directing their, um, their thinking um, to, to what the most important, again, salient points are. Of course, the associate content in your videos with assignments and assessments, but that's all part of learning objectives and really, um, you know, that, that vertical alignment. And then creating interactive co um, components. So that would be the discussion board, um, maybe putting a quiz, just a, a couple question check for understanding, quiz in the video, that kind of thing. So um, it, it, when I was you know, looking at this, it reminded me of, of really Robert Talbert with flipped learning, when we talked about our flipped learning course, because he, he as well, in, if you, if you, you know, he, talked, he would talk about the individual space, what's done, students do outside of class, and the group space is what they did inside of class. But what he would do outside of class in the individual space is provide guided practice, which is kind of really what this is. It's just guided practice. So uh, he would have um, uh, something to view, something to read um, related to the content. So just they're ingesting that content. Then he would have some, maybe some short exercise, you know, just some short exercises for them to do related to the content. And then he would always end with a reflection uh, piece so that, that they turned into him. He would just take a quick look at it before the, uh, the class started the next day uh, and just kind of see, again, it's check for understanding, um, see what they know. So that really is what this is. It's just um, you're, you're guiding them through the content. So questions before we go on. Okay, hearing none, there's more time for questions. So now we're gonna look at um, recording video. So as I, as I mentioned earlier that a, a lot of times what we do is we record a, a, or screen capture, sometimes we call it lecture capture, screen capture it with our laptop. And we're just using, we're using our web camera and we're using, well, our, we're using our laptop camera or we might have a external webcam. And then we're opening up maybe an appliance or platform like Zoom or Stream or Camtasia. Um, and we are um, re, uh, screen recording. So that will capture, let's say I had my narrated PowerPoint, or not my narrated PowerPoint, but a PowerPoint, and I'm working through the PowerPoint with, with the students. And I'm recording it. I can record it just, I can open up a Zoom session just myself and I can record it, I, I can go through the PowerPoint and just record that PowerPoint, and then I can save that recording, you know, of me talking through my PowerPoint, and um, save that recording and, and share it with, with my students. So you can do that, uh, again, we call that screen capture. You can do that in Zoom by just hosting your own meeting. I, I've done it a number of times. Um, you can do it in Microsoft Stream, and uh, we'll talk about that actually tomorrow or Friday. We have Camtasia, which is um, a video editing software, but it's also a screen capturing software. And uh, I can show you where, where you can get more information about that. In fact, I'll show you that just in just a second. And then Echo 360 is something that the health profession schools have. So um, Susan introduced me to something called the hassle factor. And the hassle factor is, um, I didn't put the hassle factor right here, but the hassle factor is really how, how difficult are these um, platforms to use. And I would, I would say in a one to five, the Zoom is the easiest because we're, we're pretty familiar with Zoom, right? We just open up a meeting, again, ourselves. I can record me going through my PowerPoint and uh, save it. I would put it in OneDrive and then share the link with my students. Um, stream, there's a little bit more of a learning curve, but once you know, once you learn it, I would say that's probably a three, maybe a two. Camtasia, that's a little bit tougher. Um, there's more to it. 
I would say that's a four. And Echo 360. Cheers, Christina. Go. Pardon? Was there a question? I want to show you though, we do have a video uh, web page about recording, editing video, and I put it actually in the chat. So it's the very, very top of the chat. But I'm going to stop my share. So this is what the video um, page looks like. But I'm going to stop my share and I'm going to, uh, I'm going to reshare. One sec here. Well, you know, I actually, I actually, this is my fault, but I did not pull that. I did not pull that up. I'll, I'll, once I get back, once I, uh, I get into uh, Chrome, I, I'll bring that up for you. But uh, the link again is in the in the chat, and um, so it really talks about uh, recording video, and you know what? I'm just going to go to it. I'll show you how I get there since I don't have it. The link saved. So, right here. And I actually do probably have it on my desktop, but a lot of times I just do it like this. Oh, this actually not it. Oh, can you see, can you see my um, Google search? Or what are you viewing right now? The Google search page. Okay. Okay. All right, well, this, this isn't clearly a way to find it. So uh, I'll go back and I will, I, will, um, I will bring that up at the end. But um, so, so with that, we, um, so we, we have compiled this, this, um, this web page for you. And, and there, are, there are a couple of sections, recording videos the first. Um, and again, talking about screen capture, but also recording video with your phone, your tablet, or your video camera, which you can easily do that as well. And, um, you know, video cameras, or, or phones and tablets really have, you know, the, every time Samsung or Android phone or an Apple phone comes out, really one of the things they always do, because there's not much you can do to improve them, is they always improve the camera. So the cameras are, are really almost high-end cameras, and, and just, plenty um, provide the, the capacity that, you, that we need to create our, our videos. Uh, now this isn't a screen capture, this would be you doing something else. Um, and we can get tripods for you, that kind of thing, you know, anything like that, that you would need. So um, I, know, I know Billy, uh, who's on our call here, she's actually, um, she's actually using a, a webcam and Zoom and a whiteboard. And so maybe sometime, uh, so she's gonna record herself um, at the whiteboard, but using a webcam while on Zoom. So there's a lot going on right there, but, but there's a, um, this is an option. But aside from using screen capture on your, um, on your uh, laptop. So then editing, editing, we do have editing software for you. And this is really, sometimes if you're doing screen capture and you, you want to get rid of the O and the ums at the very beginning. Uh, the hassle factor, these are the three things that we have um, to, to edit video. Uh, if you create, if you put your video in stream, you can edit in stream, and it actually is very easy to do because all you can do is clip from the beginning and the end, basically. So that's a one. This is on one to five. Uh, Camtasia, again, is a video editing software uh, that we have that um, you can download and access, that, that's a little higher end, so that's a three. But you can do a lot with that. You can add call outs, you can add lower thirds, which are little uh, banners at the bottom. It, it's a really nice video editing 
a software. And then Adobe Premiere on a one to five scale, it's a seven. It is very hard and it's, it's very difficult. It's part, it's really professional grade. And, but there are people who, who can use that. So that's wonderful. And that's part of our uh, creative cloud, Adobe Creative Cloud, which is you'll find in Cardinal Apps. And then storing video. Um, storing video, I, you know, I, I'd be curious to know where you store your video currently. Um, as we move, um, you know, we'll recommend, as you know, kind of where we're at right now, we recommend storing your video in OneDrive um, and then also Microsoft Stream or YouTube. So um, I'm going to talk just a little bit about Microsoft Stream, but what we'll expand on that uh, tomorrow and, and then the next day. So Stream is part of you know, OneDrive, as you can see, it's part of Office 365, Microsoft. Stream, same. The, the thing about Stream is, is a video repository for the university. Um, you know, it, it used to be, uh, didn't have the offerings that we needed to really, I would never have said probably a year ago to store your videos in Stream because it, did, it just wasn't there. What, what, what we needed it to do, it just couldn't do. But what I've often said, and um, it's really true, is that Microsoft, and I don't know why, but they have been throwing their money at education. And again, they, and I'll also always say this too, and they have a lot of money. So, so they are um, really, you know, with, uh, there's, um, you know, we've seen the things they've done it with PowerPoint, with subtitles, accessibility, they're really going all out on accessibility, which is fantastic. And again, Microsoft has all the money in the world, so it's nice that they're really taking the uh, interest and in, in putting their money in, in these areas. But Stream, it has really matured in the past year and has become, it has become a real player for us. And, and, uh, and I, I'm gonna, on my next slide, we'll, we'll kind of dig in just a little bit deeper with Stream. So for storing video, what we're recommending is storing them in OneDrive. Um, stream, YouTube, and then sharing the links with your with your students. So, in, just a little overview on Stream. This is Susan and I, or uh, um, Susan and me. We uh, created some videos for our flipped uh, class this summer. So, I I put them in Stream, and really, we recorded them. We screen captured them on Zoom. It was as easy as could be. Although what always happened to us is, you know, we do a two minute video. You can see it's two minutes and 36 seconds, but we had talked for 20 minutes. There was some video editing that had to be done for sure. So and it'd be a 30 minute video and I would cut it down to two. But so we screen captured just like you would on Zoom. I, we dialed up, got on the meeting, recorded it. There we are. What I like about Stream is I would grab it. I, what I always do is I always record my Zoom videos to my computer because then I know where they're at. Um, if they're in the cloud, you know, I'll never go, I'll never go there. I'll always get those emails that say I have to, you know, it's expiring. They're going to be gone. A lot of times they, they go away. But I, so I always record my Zoom videos to my computer. So we did our, our little thing, uh, recorded in Zoom, just our faces. I grabbed it off my computer and then I did put it in Camtasia and I would edit it. And I think I put a little title card on the front, you know, we could do that. Um, but then what I, I, I put it into stream. And what I like about stream is you can see that um, right here is the closed captioning. I would, I asked to have closed captioning or I just, you know, chose closed captioning. I'm going to do this here, this. Um, so we have closed caption, but you can also see we have transcription. So it just does auto automatic transcription. And then if I wanted to do it, let's just say this is another kind of video, maybe something for, for a class. The interactivity part you can see up here, that is really where I'd put in that Microsoft form. I'd click that. So I can share this video uh, right here is where I edit the video. Um, and, and then this, you can see the closed caption settings are here. So it, it's really, that's just what a video looks like and kind of the components to it when you put it in stream. And now I am going to um, take us out to stream quick and just kind of show you what that looks like. Okay, so I 
you know, to, I think we probably talked about this, but to get to Microsoft Stream, uh, you know, generally you always, if we're lucky, we can get to everything we need to get to uh, through Cardinal Apps. So you just go to, uh, you go to Cardinal Apps, then you go to Office 365. We're still seeing your PowerPoint. Okay. Are you seeing my um, 365 right now? Yes. Yes. Okay, thanks. So, so then, you know, you can see like, these are the apps. This is my Office 365. I got here through Cardinal Apps. Um, so uh, you can see that these are all my, these are all the um, apps that I use the most. Like this is Forms, this is Sway, but right here, you can't really see it, is my stream. So stream looks like a little, I think looks like a, it's just an arrow. Um, it's a pink arrow. So this is uh, the dashboard that you'll see when you go into stream. I can look and see other people's videos that people are sharing. You know, you can share videos, you can make them private or share them with, you can share them with the whole organization, you can share them with a group or you can keep them private. So then I go to my content and I'll just show you what my videos look like. Kathleen, can I ask a question? Of course. I'm in 365 and I typed in a Microsoft stream at the bottom, but it didn't pop up. And the same thing happened with the Camtasia from the link that you gave. It, breaks, it, it, um, it sent me to the download from the company and it said free download. So okay. It's like okay. Hours, did, it's like, did, you, did you click on the link in, that I shared with you that I shared in the chat? Yes. Okay. okay. So then we'll, we'll go, I'll go back in and show you, I'll show you Camtasia then where to really get that. But what, um, what, what was your question about stream? If it doesn't show up, if it doesn't show up, I'm going to, I'm going to go, I'm going to stop. Yeah. I'm in 365 right now trying to find it. Okay. So I'm going to, I do want to show you something here. And I tried and I put in the name at the bottom in the search block and it wouldn't come up. Okay. So if we go back, like, so do, do you see my story and video slide right here? So if you go to Office 365, generally, sometimes your apps will show up along the left side like they did for me, but sometimes they'll show up, I don't know if you'll see, if you guys, if you'll see this ribbon of, of um, apps. But what happens is I use stream, so it shows up for me, but it, but the first time you use stream, if you don't use stream, um, you have to go to all apps. Yeah. I just found it. And okay. I okay. That. Yeah. And then, and then once you start using it, it will, it will show up, but otherwise, so everything here, like if you go to all apps, there's lots of things here, like Flipgrid's there, lots of, lots of other off, uh, Microsoft apps. So I'm going to, I'm going to stop share that and we'll go back to um, stream just one time and take a quick, peek at it. Okay, so we're back. So you can see that these are my videos. Um, and I will we'll just pop this one back up. So over you can over I'm in it. I will uh, over here. I'm in the next to the transcripts. Well, hello, everybody. We're glad Susan. that you're back. My spotlight. So this is where if I wanted to create, if I wanted to put interactivity, if I wanted to put a, um, a form, which is again a Microsoft form, it's like a Google form and you would, you could put um, just a, a couple of assessment questions in there. Um, I would, I would be able to do that here. We're going to actually talk about that tomorrow. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time on that one. You can see um, my closed captions. I can um, turn them off, turn them on. I can change. For amazingly, week three. We should watch that video. That's a good one. Um, and then really the settings, transparency, small, large, all that kind of thing. That's all there. If I go down here, we'll, we'll click that. I'll click away from that. And here, um, this is where you trim the video. Uh, this is Michael Moon asked me last week about downloading videos. So you can download videos from stream only the owner or the, I can make anybody the owner of this, you know, along with me, uh, but only the owner can download the video, but I can download the video 
uh, what I would do is download the video for a student who, who can't access, you know, doesn't have a reliable internet, uh, so that they could, I would download the video, I would share a link, um, I would, well, I'll, let me back, I download it in OneDrive, I put it in OneDrive, share the link to them, and they, they would open it on their computer, and then it would download on their computer. So that, that's how you would, how you would do, uh, do a stream video, share a stream video with someone who doesn't have reliable internet. So, um, really that's, okay, I, you can like, you know, it's very much, it's a little YouTube-y, uh, you know, you, you can like it, you can comment, I can turn off comments. Um, hey, Kathy, one other thing. Yeah. The transcript, you can edit that. So if you are reviewing a transcript and you see some right. inaccuracies, you could actually go in and edit and, make, right. and update that. Right. So, so that, thank you, Terry. That's done right here. I, I, I um, and I, I have done that before. I didn't act, I'm not sure I did this one, but yes, yes, you edit it right there. So, yeah. So uh, uh, any questions about stream? It's available to us. And uh, again, it's really, I would, I would call it uh, uh, just a video repository uh, for, for the university. I have a question. Sure. Um, I, as you were talking, I went to, uh, and I've downloaded Microsoft Stream. Um, I see a whole bunch of videos posted by UIW people. Um, did they make these public? Uh, like they, I did. they did make them public. Okay, so I can find all about cell signaling from Veronica Acosta and biology lectures and that sort of thing. They made these public. How, how do you make them public and how do you make them private? Okay, let me just show you that. So when uh, automatically, um, when you, uh, I have to go back to just to my content and I go to my videos. Okay. So automatically they are set to private. Okay. Um, I think when people first, before I got involved with stream, they were set to allow all the university to see them. I, um, when we started using stream and instructional technology, I asked infrastructure to, to change that so that it would just be so that I, we could control who sees our videos. So do you see a list of my videos right here on the left side? I'm never sure what I'm sharing. Do you yes. see that? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Right. Okay. So, so then I'm over here by the pencil. If I want to, if I want to, uh, I'm, I'm still looking at this video with Susan and me. And if I go, if I want to up, uh, edit it, I go to the pencil. And really, this is kind of where everything is done for a video. So I, this is where I, I name it. I can put a description here. I, I have to put the language that is spoken so that, that um, we'll get the right transcription. So they'll transcribe it into English. Uh, right here is where I'd say allow everyone to see my video. But I don't, I don't generally do that. Now, I, I will say that when, before I got involved in stream, this was the default. So, so if people didn't realize that, that's why their videos are shared with the world. But I'm here to tell you that that's not the case anymore. And I, I wasn't really, um, I wasn't really involved in, you know, streams always been there. People found it on their own. Um, but to use it uh, as a video repository for, you know, faculty creative videos, you know, students can create videos as well. I, I really wanted just a tighter uh, control on that. I, I knew that people wouldn't want everyone to see their videos generally. So, so I had that permission changed. Um, and, and, and plus you didn't want everybody to always have to go in and uncheck that. So this is the default now. Now, if I want to share with people, this is, I wasn't really going to get into all this, but you can share with people. You can, um, I can just share with one person, you know, I can just share with um, Karen so that she can see this, you know, and now she, she now it will show up. She can see it. I'm still the owner. Um, what I, what I had to make sure it was clicked here was auto generate the caption file because then that, then that does do the closed caption and the transcription as well. And then because, uh, I've already published it because you already saw 
Um, generally, you do all of this when you first upload a video, but of course, this was already uploaded. Um, so I just changed it now because mostly because I added Karen so she could view this video and then I hit apply. And then I have all the everything, all the permissions and everything I want in this video. So, and it. Can I ask a question about when you go in and I clicked on create? Mm -hmm. It says the video link can only be 15 minutes. Right. So this one, yeah, this one, this one, if you're going to do, um, if you're going to do a screen capture right now, it is 15 minutes. That's, thank you for saying that. So, so um, this would be a thing where you would chunk or if you had a longer screen capture, you would use Zoom. So that was actually my question. So you can chunk, so you can just keep stopping and starting or is it a whole new video? You It'd be a whole new video. Oh, okay. But, okay. But, but you know what I would do in that case, if you're going to be longer than 50 minutes, you can do it. What Susan and I did, I would just record in zoom, bring it into stream, get your auto captions there. You know, that I would, I would do it like that. But if it, if it's, if it's 15 minutes or less, you, you could have the option to do it here, but you could do it all in stream in zoom and then just bring it in and we'll talk about that tomorrow about creating a video one of them is tomorrow and one of them is the next day importing a video or creating a video and we'll go through all the permissions and everything like that and we'll also put in interactivity as well so so that Kathy, is, can i ask a question of course so uh you put your video in zoom you've got your closed captions um and then if you want to share it with your class rather than entering all those names and creating a group is it easier to just download that thing to onedrive and then share it with i mean you could you could um i will we were going to talk about this tomorrow but i i can, I can. I'll, I'll save my question then that's okay <laughs> i don't want to get the train off the track. i mean i i tomorrow's will be like two minutes i've already eaten all the content so no <laughs> um but um yeah it, we do want to spend a little bit of time i will say this that um um that stream they just i'm, I'm gonna say it was may they just put that screen capture piece in there like the, you couldn't screen capture you couldn't trim a video before that so they're making strides um you know to really it's, it's interesting kind of what they're doing but um We'll, yeah, we'll talk and because Susan has a really good point about sharing video and I, I'm not sure what time it is, but okay. So, um, so we'll do that tomorrow about how you share a video and stream, right? Yeah. I have a question. Sure. Yeah, that screen capture that you talked about, mm -hmm. is that equivalent to Snagit? You know, yep. the... Yeah. Yep. Snagit is screen capture as well. Yes. Okay. But it is, is the, the one you're describing as easy as Snagit? Well, I, you know, Snagit is pretty easy. Yeah, I, I, do we have a permission for Snagit? No. <laughs> yeah, okay. No, no, because we have, no. Um, no. I, I thought it came with a bundle of Camtasia. Oh, yeah, did it? No, did, I don't, um, no, no, it didn't. I don't, no, I didn't buy it. I, bought, I, I no. bought it separately. Oh, you did, yeah. I was going to say, I didn't, we didn't purchase it just because of the, it was the, the price point right there. Ugh. But you're, I think you're right. I think it is, it is probably a little bit easier. Well, the reason we bought Camtasia wasn't so much for a screen capture. It was basically for editing because we didn't have any. Editing. Right, right, right. Yeah. yeah. But can you see, I, I just, again, I'm sure what you can see, but can you see record your screen right here? Yes. Okay, so so that's basically what we'll talk about about create. This is the screen recording. So Gil, maybe tomorrow, then you can see if you tune in tomorrow or the next day. Okay. Uh, yeah, you can see if it's easier. I, I I haven't used Snagit for a long time, but I know it's pretty easy for sure. That was pretty easy. So Dr. You know, so Snagit's pre predominantly a screen capturing. You know, taking one image of your screen. Um, and then it's owned by the same company that makes Camtasia, which is yeah. more of a video yeah. editor. Right. But uh, yeah, the stream is ext is very easy to use and very user friendly as well. Right. Okay. Well, I um, so just to round things out here, uh, I do want to. Um, well, well, I'm going to save questions till the very end, because this is this is one thing I did want to say. So cloud storage. When we talk about cloud storage. Um, this is me talking to you, and if you could spread the word to everybody else, I'd be great. I'd greatly appreciate it. But no, we—I really want to kind of help socialize this message: is that 
so cloud, <laughs> cloud storage is really um, just miles of computers that look like this, owned by Amazon, Microsoft, and Google. And that's where all of our cloud storage is. It's really stored on just giant computers. So what's interesting is pre-pandemic, this is what people would tell you, but you know, vendors, storage is cheap, like storage is cheap, and it was cheap. But then during the pandemic, storage became really expensive because people were using it. And now nobody's saying storage is cheap. And in fact, they're going, you know, they'll just come, you know, they care about storage now. They didn't care before because there was lots of storage and it what people weren't using it really. So, um, so what's happened then for us is that we've run into really some storage limits and, um, and really, uh, looking for ways to not pay for storage if we don't have to like extra, you know, because it's interesting how expensive it is. And I would rather spend that money on software or those kinds of things that, you know, benefit us in the, in the classroom or in instruction. But so, so storage isn't cheap anymore. And one of the, one of the things that happened was, um, uh, uh, Blackboard. So Blackboard, they got, they were just getting slammed with um, storage overages by everyone. And, and um, so they, they kind of came down hard on people. And one of the things in our discussions, um, and we weren't crazy over storage or anything like that, but one of the, one of the, um, one of the questions that I, well, that came up was how big are our courses? Like generally, uh, you know, LMS, you limit the course size. Now Canvas will say this and Blackboard will say this. They'll say limit a course size to one gig. Okay, well, well, a lot of our courses were one gig, some of them, you know, two gig, but then we had some 15 gig, 25 gig, that kind of thing. So we are kind of going, we're going forward being mindful of storage and what we, are paying for storage and really how we're using storage. And we are going to um, limit our course sizes to two gig. Now again, Blackboard and Canvas would say one gig or 500 megabyte, but we're, we're doing two gig. And so two gig is, is, is quite a, a large course, but if you're uploading lots of videos into it, that's gonna eat away your two gig. That's kind of what it does. But if you upload links to a video, uh, those videos then, let's say a video from OneDrive, a video from Stream, those videos are being stored by Microsoft and we already pay for it. So it's no money out of, it's no extra money. We're already paying for that storage as part of our Office 365. So that's why when we're rethinking how our video storage solutions, it really, um, we wouldn't go, um, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I think, hawk stream if I didn't think it was a good solution for us. Um, and again, like a year ago, I, I didn't think it was a good solution for us, but it's just getting better and better and, uh, and really quite robust. So that's really why we're moving toward videos in OneDrive um, stream or Office 365. Kathy? I mean, or, or I meant YouTube. <laughs> Because uh, how do you, how do you find out how big your how big your your course file is on Blackboard? Yeah, you know what? So so this, I would just add stuff because it seems like we weren't told about limits. Or, no, you know. no, a hundred percent. I just want to say this: nobody was told about limits. There were no limits. Okay, so that's why. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's oh please, yeah, it's nothing on faculty. Generally, yeah, there were no course limits because generally, you know, you you do have course limits. No, it was no nobody. Okay. No, it's no. Now, how big your file is? So yes, and and we'll be sending out some information about this. We okay. we, we kind of waited just because we wanted to wait. We don't want to send it out in the middle of the summer and let it just get buried, because it is kind of important. But we're going to help with this, and um, and of course we're not going to be, you know, we can adjust sizes as well. But we do want to we do want to put a limit in place just because that is best practice. And, and of course, but we're not gonna get all crazy about it and that kind of thing. So there will be some guidance coming out probably at the, right, probably August 1st is when we'll start, you know, you guys are first to know about this. So thank you for tuning in. But, um, and then also I, I, I wanna say this too, since you're here and 
you came to this. I want to let you know that Qualtrics is now available in Cardinal apps. So people who need to use Qualtrics, you just hop on in there. And what you, it's kind of the same thing as Office 365. Um, when you go to Cardinal apps, if you haven't used Qualtrics, you might have to go up here to the corner where it says add apps, kind of like you did in Office 365. Go up there and then you'll find Qualtrics. Click on it and it will show up on your front page here. Okay, so that's good news. Can I also ask, nobody's said anything about what the capability is, but I mean, I currently have a license to Qualtrics and it, I had to, to um, contract the number of you know, emails I could send out, the number of people that could get on it. Oh, yeah. Are, does each staff member have a guidance on how many um, things they can send out in it and how many people, and is our password our own, is that our own um, account or is everybody able to access and see the? So faculty, faculty, staff and students, um, your, your account actually will be brought into this account. Um, but no, there's no limits. There's no limits. So, and, and Andy Pagel, um, is from IR, he's generously offered to take over administration of it. So he's quite familiar with Qualtrics. So you'll be hearing from him as well. Edpuzzle, uh, I've had a number of people ask me about Edpuzzle um, because it was free during the pandemic. And um, so I did to contact them recently and we will upgrade our license because I think right now the free license, you could have 20 um, videos. And these are again, the videos that you would put inside your other video um, to do assessments. So um, we are going to upgrade to that and it's, I will let you know when that happens, but you people who have Edpuzzle, uh, your um, accounts will automatically be upgraded. And then lastly, we, uh, Cesar Hernandez um, had an offer from Alamo College that was too good to refuse and we couldn't match it uh, to keep him here. So he, um, as you know um, the schools that he worked with I know he sent out and noticed that he was he, he was going to Alamo College is June 30th so we're in the process right now of ha um, hiring another instructional designer and we do have some faculty from um, on that hiring committee so we're setting up the interviews right now so we'll have somebody in place uh, very soon so those are just kind of a few updates that I wanted to uh, uh, let you know about first um, then we'll, we'll actually put some um, some uh, communication out about them. So does anybody have any questions? I know we're getting toward the end here. It's two minutes, but I uh, say thank you for Qualtrics. Oh, sure. Yeah, it's a long time coming, but, and I, I will also say this, you know, it, it's, well, you're welcome. I'm just gonna say you're welcome. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, you deserve it. Everybody deserves it. It's just so, you know, it's, we're beyond survey monkeys, so. Kathleen, mm -hmm. this is Carol Lee. Sure. Carol, um, are you going to address sound and sound quality? Oh, yeah, that's good. good question. Uh, because uh, I, I got some feedback from my students, and I want to make sure I've got a good <laughs> interaction with them. Of course. Sound. Of course. So let me say that. Let me say this. We, I know that faculty um, were able to um, – submit requests for hardware, software, that kind of thing that you need to teach remotely, teach remotely. And I know, uh, so Neil and I will be looking at very soon, but things like sound for sure. I, I mean, please, all you have to do is really uh, just email me. We, we can, we'll get you, I mean, this is a little, you know, beyond that. If it's all kind of, yeah, just email me. Yeah, we'll get you, we'll get you set up with what you need. And we can like, we can troubleshoot your issue and just see what it is, for sure. Any, anything else? Any other? Um, with Stream, when you uh, share the link, do you lose the capacity to use the forms? Is it only, like, do the forms and things only work if you're sharing it through Stream? Yeah, it, uh, well, that's a good question, but yes, it's gonna have to open up in Stream. But I will say this, you can also use those forms. You can use forms in PowerPoint as well. So, um, uh, but yes, yes, you're right. So if you were downloading it and, and sending it uh, to a student, there's a chance it would, 
I'm, I'm going to have to check on that. I'll write that down. That's a good question. But I, I, my first inkling is to say it, you might lose that connection. You might lose it. So let me um, let me check on that. Uh, I've had, Kathy, I've had some questions about the um, Camtasia. Mm -hmm. And if they go to, um, and I sent, I posted a link that takes you to the, um, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's in the chat, it says download Camtasia. And that just takes you, that link takes you to our uh, available software page. Uh -huh. You click, there's a, there's a link in there that says Camtasia. You click on that and you'll have direction to download it as well as uh, the key code to download the software. I also posted uh, a link to our Camtasia training page so you can get lots of information on training. Um, and then Jen, uh, Adela, can you, uh, we have a question regarding how you can check uh, your size and I can't remember how to do it, but I'm wondering if you're, if you're listening, if you can tell us how to check your, uh, how big your course is. Well, Terry, Terry, before, before we go on to that, I do want to say the link that Terry sent is this available software page. So it does, it will, it's password protected. So it takes a minute to get there because we put the keys in, keys in and everything like that for you to, um, we have to update the Qualtrics, but yeah, everything is here that we have, um, that we have available to us. So that's, that's a, a good uh, bookmark thing to bookmark. But and also, um, we have a, uh, a page dedicated to video. Uh, do you want to pull that one up, Kathy? Because it's got lots of really good tutorials in it. Sure. That for was all point. the different things that you can do with stream. Yeah, well, I'll get that for you. That one, that one's just a little, I, I have to get that, I have to get the, uh, I just sent some new ones to, I sent several new ones to uh, John yesterday for some other cool stuff that you can do with it. Okay, so that, that page is here. That was, that was the page I was struggling to get to before, but it is the one that I, I put at the, the very top. So it's a lot of the things I talked about, uh, recording, editing, this is all the software that we have. And then if you open it up, you will um, be able to see, uh, you know, tutorials and those kinds of things. So, but everything that I kind of mentioned is here. So uh, like the screen capture on stream. How it's you put it. in, and it's, I just added that link to the, uh, that link is now on the chat. So if you want to go yep. to that page. It's yep. There. yep. So, so yeah, this is, this will get you kind of the information that you need, but tomorrow uh, we, we're, we'll be talking about, either importing um, videos into stream and then adding um, um, a form, adding um, an assessment or creating, I can't remember which. What is creating a video in stream? So that would be the screen capture piece. The other one is importing a video into stream. So that'll help you. I think Friday is the importing one, Kathy. Okay, okay. So just, I wanna thank everybody for for being here and uh, always you know, reach out uh, we, we, we're happy to help in any way that we can. And again, we're, the team is Susan, Adela, Terry, me, and, uh, we know we're here to support. So just whatever we can do, please let us know. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much. We'll see you again. For sure. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye.